right, so before we get started, um, I'm losing my voice. My kids were sick. I don't know why I'm always sick when I make videos. Maybe I make the videos because I'm sick or something. I don't know, but my kids were just sick, so I think I'm barely getting it. Um, my voice is starting to go. Got a runny nose, then it's a stuffy nose. But um, anyway, just uh, deal with it. So um, <clears throat> this car originally came as an automatic four-cylinder. Has um, these little cheap racing seats and then just a little seat cover in the back. It is uh, obviously red interior with a little bit of black in there. Interior is pretty clean. The exterior, I would honestly leave it as is. I personally like the uh, kind of patina look, you can call it, but um, that's not up to me. As far as the suspension, it's got pretty much all stock uh, four-cylinder suspension. It still has a four-cylinder rear end, um, and it has, uh, I think it has the V8 brakes now, but it's got the little 7.5 rear end in it with the 373s since, it's, since it was an automatic four-cylinder. Uh, as far as exhaust, it just has the shorty headers. Um, has a uh, high flow H pipe with only two high flow cats and then just uh, mufflers and a cat back. Um, it's got just a stock Fox body harness and computer, nothing special there. Um, electric fan out of a, oh, we got this one from like Amazon. So there's an electric fan for the um, radiator. And then I've been running one lately on all the cars I've done. Um, I run like a little 12 inch uh, pusher fan for the condenser and then that'll turn on anytime the AC is activated. There's this Paxton is designed to, uh, it's an old school one. I think it's like a SN93, where's it at? Where's it at, is it there? It's like a SN93 or SN92 or something like that. There it is, SN92. <clears throat> Excuse me, my voice is going again. Um, so it's got the SN92, still has a smog pump, and it's got a 3G. Pretty much that supercharger is designed to go on a completely stock 5.0. It's not intercooled, obviously. You don't see an intercooler. Um, and it's probably designed to push, I don't know, five pounds at most, I would say, five or six maybe. It comes with kind of like a snorkel thing, and then it'll have a cover here for the... Uh, MAF sensor attached to the air filter. I just kind of routed it into there. That way um, it'll pull in fresher air. You want to have a, uh, a clean path to the MAF there. So it's uh, bent down, like the uh, air filter is kind of bent down a little bit. And then there's at least like six inches of a direct flow into the MAF. That way you get the cleanest MAF reading. You want to keep it away from the fans, obviously, and from hotter air. So the Paxton, like I said, this one's designed to pretty much go on a stock Fox body. Um, it has the FMU that comes with it and the kit. I don't know how old this damn thing is, but uh, I got it from my boy, uh, Brian, and um, yeah, it works. So to do a four-cylinder swap, I'm going to run you guys through it, what you're going to need. I'll insert, I'll uh, insert some videos here of how the car yeah. runs. Does that help? Oh, that actually does help a lot. Man, I can't see the, the, the gauge cluster though. Oh well. <clears throat> All right, well number one. Let's see, we'll start off in first gear. <clears throat> here we go. 3,000. in second this time let me turn the light on in here so we can at least see a little bit let's do second gear all right here we go three thirty five hundred or so doing a lot 
want more four cylinder swaps, the best thing to do at that time was to buy a salvaged or a beat up uh, 5 five speed. And then that way you can have, you know, computer harness, uh, fuel lines, um, you know, all those things that you needed without having to piece everything together. Peppa, come here. Shh. Sit. Good girl. Wait. Y'all remember when she was a little puppy? Look at her. Good girl. She's a really, really good dog. Anyway, um, so first things first, drivetrain, obviously. You're gonna need motor tranny, all that good stuff. Once you have that, um, injector harness, obviously, uh, computer harness, make sure or try your best to match up your um, uh, computer harness with the year of the car. Otherwise, you will be swapping out a bunch of unnecessary things. Let's say this car is a 1990. If you get a harness from a 1995-0, then you could literally just run the computer in there run it through the firewall and it'll plug into the harness on this side here. You don't have to change the harness that comes on this side. That's the only harness you really need to change as long as you get the same year car. Now, um, you can tell, but that's a whole nother story. I'm not even gonna talk about that, but you can tell by the plug colors, the, um, heart, the uh, couple of the pigtails you'll have on there, but that's another video, but get the same harness from the same year as your car if you are piecing it together. Obviously, the best way to do it, even now with the prices, is to buy a whole car the same year as your car. But if you can't do it, then you'll have to piece it together. So, harness, computer. Um, that stuff will literally plug right into the harnesses that are on this side. Now, the headlight harness on the 5.0, um, the alternator is on that side on the 5.0. So, it's a different head, or the, the only difference is that the harness uh, has the alternator plug here or the harness for the alternator is connected to the headlight harness and it ends up here. On the four cylinder, the, harne the headlight harness is the same, but the alternator uh, portion of it will end up here because the four cylinder alternator is here. You can keep your headlight harness if you're getting a, um, let's say you're doing a 3G swap or whatever, all you gotta do is extend it. Super easy, it's only a couple wires. Keep your headlight harness, extend it, everything else will plug right in. Um, the only harness you're gonna need to replace is the V8 one that comes to the firewall, like I said. Plugs into the computer, comes out, it's this one here. Boom, comes around, plugs into your stuff here on this side, and then it'll uh, plug into the injector harness here. Um, even the ignition coil is the same on the four cylinder to the V8. Um, O2 sensor harness is gonna plug in here. This is the AC one, but it plugs in around here and it runs through the bottom. Do some research on that as well. Um, certain computers, five-speed, auto, O2 sensor harness, they only work with certain ones or you can damage a computer. So, <clears throat> excuse me, do some research on that. But O2 sensor harness, um, starter harness, the one that plugs in here and runs to the starter, you're gonna need that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's that. Um, the battery cable harness, like the power cable and all that, you can use your four cylinder one. This plugs in, or this uh, will bolt onto the timing cover for ground, and then it'll bolt onto the frame. Um, so that's that. You can use your stock four cylinder from that. Booster, Messer cylinder, um, they're different for the V8. Not 100% necessary to swap that out, but if you got the motor out, do it. Don't wait. Um, all these things obviously are V8 components. Uh, the vacuum line is different on the four cylinder. You can keep it, but you'll be able to tell it was a four cylinder. Uh, clutch cable, obviously, if you're gonna go five speed. Um, speedometer cable, I always run the run app. I always run the speedo cable without cruise control because it won't leak like the cruise control ones will with the VSS sensor on it. Uh, the vehicle speed sensor on it, sorry. If you are in a smog compliant state like I am, you will need to have the um, EGR solenoids and stuff that go here. So that's another thing. It'll be a bunch of vacuum lines that are extremely brittle. They'll uh, be here. They'll connect to the smog uh, pump canister thing and all that nice stuff. So I removed it here. Um, I'm gonna add it afterwards, but um, this car will pass smog 100% legit. So the EGR things, the vacuum line, those are the things you're going to need from the V8 if you want to pass smog. If you don't, take that off, remove your EGR, and who cares about it? 
Um, oh, this is one thing I forgot in my other video. There's a big uh, ball, the vacuum ball thing that goes inside of the fender. It's, you know, smaller than like, it's like the size of a softball. It'll bolt on here, boom, and it runs through here and it connects to this part here. This is for the AC. If you don't have this, then your uh, AC will only blow out through the defroster. So it connects here. This connects to the uh, EVAP box or the HVAC box inside the, uh, through the firewall underneath the dash. And then this goes to your vacuum supply there. <clears throat> fuel lines, you'll need different fuel lines for the V8. Reason being, four cylinder fuel lines end up here on the bottom. The V8 ones end up here on the bottom and then they'll plug into your V8 fuel lines here. Now what you can do, I think, if you wanna keep your four cylinder uh, fuel lines, they're the same size as the V8, no need to change them, and everything after the fuel filter is the same V8 to four cylinder. Even the pump is the same. Factory pump is the same. So you'll have to replace your fuel lines from fuel rail all the way back to the fuel filter. Then after that, you can keep your four cylinder stuff. Now, if you want to keep your four-cylinder fuel lines, you can, and I believe the Explorer fuel lines, they have the connection point back here. So you might even be able to use Explorer fuel rails um, and then just plug them into your four-cylinder ones. I think, I noticed that, not 100% sure, but I think. If not, you can keep your four-cylinder fuel lines because these V8 ones are kind of expensive now. They'll end there and then just get like the Russell fittings that'll um you know you'll have an fittings from the four cylinder lines and then just run it straight to your uh five oh or uh to your small block four fuel lines here easy and it'll be way cheaper than buying factory Obviously, fuel lines. the gauge cluster is another thing that you're gonna have to change and even then you don't have to the only thing that's different on the v8 gauge cluster is um the speedometer only goes to 85 on the four cylinders 87 to 89 uh five o's only go to 85 um, but you can keep all that. If you don't care about it, you're only going to 85, you can keep all that. The only thing that you really have to have to change 100% is the RPM tack. If you have a gauge cluster that doesn't work, that's broken or whatever it might be, you can take apart the gauge cluster from the V8 and just take out that little V8 tack that goes up to 7,000 RPM instead of 6,000 like the four cylinder. And it's gonna be all out of whack on the four cylinders and you can put it straight onto your four cylinder uh, gauge cluster. Uh, if you're going from uh, auto to five speed, you're gonna need pedals. Heater core lines, obviously the hoses, you're gonna need to replace that. The accumulator on the V8, as you can see, whips around this way because the compressor's there. The accumulator on the four cylinder comes straight here. So you gotta replace the accumulator. Then this uh, line that goes from the EVAP in the dash straight down from the evaporator uh, on the AC comes straight down here and then hooks up to the condenser. You can keep your factory four cylinder condenser, that's fine. This line, you could even keep your four cylinder one, but the four cylinder does a weird thing where like the line will come out, come this way, and then it like loops around and takes up a bunch of space here. You can keep it, you don't have to change it, but it just looks ugly. The eight one, this one's different as well. Boop, this one goes to the uh, AC compressor. That's this one here. Again, the condenser's fine. You can keep that from your four cylinder if it's five. If you're going from a five speed four cylinder to a um, to a uh, five oh five speed, you can keep your four cylinder T5. Um, you'll just have to get a pilot bearing for a Ranger because the input shaft is a little bit thinner on the four cylinder than the V8. So there's a special pilot bearing you could buy for a Ranger that'll make that work. Um, Drive shaft is going to be different from an auto four cylinder to a V8 uh, T5. Again, if you're going a uh, um, five speed four cylinder to a 505 five speed, then you can keep all the drivetrain stuff as, uh, from the transmission back. Bell housing is going to be different. Exhaust, obviously, the hangers, we said that. Um, K members are the same, V8 to four cylinder. A arms are the same. Spindles are different. Shocks are different. Rear end is different. Four cylinders don't have a rear sway bar. They have a smaller front sway bar. So get the V8 ones and you'll be good. No need for Eibach or anything fancy. Put a V8 sway bar on your stock four cylinder and it's gonna drive 10 Ooh, times better. Brake lines. So 
This car still has a stock four cylinder rear end, so all the brake lines and everything hook up like normal. The reason you have to replace them is because, like I said, the fuel lines run on the driver's side on the four cylinder. On the on the five O, they run on the passenger side. Um, so the brake lines run with the um, they run along with the fuel lines on the four cylinder. Now, I've never ever replaced the brake lines from the master cylinder back on a V8 swap. All I ever do is, even if you're going to a drum uh, V8 rear end, all you gotta do is either, because the junction point on the four cylinder is here behind the, um, behind the, uh, or right where the passenger uh, rear tire is, um, that's where it goes from the metal um, brake line to the rubber uh, brake hose and then it, from there it tees off to the little uh, brake line again and then it hooks up to the to the um, little brake cylinder on the drums on both sides but it meets up here in the back now if you're doing a v8 swap with the drum rear end all you got to do is remove the brake line from your four cylinder rear end put it on your 8.8 uh, .8 v8 rear end and everything will hook right up like nothing and you won't have to replace anything else as far as the brake lines Remove your, your stock 7.5 brake line, hard brake line from uh, drum to drum, put it on your V8, you're good. Now, if you're going disc rear end, the best thing to do is keep the brake line from your 7.5 drum to drum. Keep it exactly where it is, where the rubber hose and the junction point is, keep all that the same. And you order the two fittings, you could get them from LMR, you get the two fittings, you cut and flare your brake lines and you hook them up to your uh, disc brake, uh, brake hoses that go to the caliper. Easy. Now, let's say you don't want to do all that. Nah, I don't want to do all that. I don't want to cut and flare. I don't know how to do it. Yada, yada, whatever. If you are lucky, you can go to... Now, what I'm about to tell you is going to be so you can keep your brake lines from the master cylinder all the way back to the junction point here where it goes from brake line to rubber hose and then back to brake line on the actual rear end. All you need to do is go to your local junkyard and if you can find a 94-95 V6 Mustang, the junction point is in the exact same spot as the four-cylinder Fox bodies. So you'll just lower the rear end a little bit at the junkyard on a 94-95 V6. Take the calipers, everything with you from caliper to caliper, the brake line that hooks up, on, that lays on, that mounts on the rear end that hooks up caliper to caliper it will literally mount identical to the 7.5 drum rear end. Take it off the, the V6, put it on your, uh, on your uh, V8 disc rear end out of a 1996 Cobra, whatever. Put it on your 1996 GT rear end, whatever you're gonna run. Boop, put the brake line on there from the V6 and it'll literally bolt right up to your uh, Fox body four cylinder body brake lines. Easy. So wrapping this one up now, um, I encourage you guys to do it on your own, do the swap on your own. It's super easy. I always encourage people to do your own work, whether you're doing a swap, suspension work, whatever it is, do your own work, man. You can do it on your own. And if it's uh, if it doesn't come out the way you like, you could always redo it and you have no one to blame and you're not uh, you know, having to dish out extra money. You got more money to buy more parts. That's always good. So um, yeah, if you guys have any comments, any questions about this swap, about this video, something you might wanna add, uh, put it down below. If you want to go through and write down everything I said and put it in the comments, I'll pin the comment or whatever. Um, I know I always, always say this and I never deliver, but starting this new year, I'm going to try and uh, post a little bit more. Hopefully I can. Um, and uh, if you guys have any ideas and stuff, let me know. Um, other than that, happy new year guys. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys soon and I'll be uh, making a lot more videos.